um, musical instrument interface affects the results of musical activity affects to uh, such a degree that its selection is the actual part that should be taken by the composer let's take a step sequencer example here is a like imagine here is a step sequencer with 16 steps per a certain time range and even though the, okay we have a possibility to change those 16 steps to let's say 32 64 some arbitrary number number yeah but but in order to do that we have to go through some menus find some i don't know drop down dialog select the value and so on yeah people are lazy by the nature so most of the people will not actually do that and what we will end up with if this step sequencer interface is for some reasons a popular thing we will end up with most of the musicians doing the same thing having the same constraint that's what i'm talking about is it bad what are the constraints okay Step sequencer, 16 steps, quantized time. Do we lose something? We will end up with a stripped down musical phrasing. We will not have uh, abilities to go uh, like we would go if we would have continuous time. Here we have uh, a time for the onset allowed interval for the onsets of musical events specified by that grid and uh, musical phrasing if you ever well whoever played a live instrument they know that one of the uh, key aspects of musical phrasing is being able to frivolously play with time so we will have a stripped down musical phrasing let's say some composer decided that well i want to have that constraint let it be my distinguished feature feature of my language when people will hear that music music i made when i communicated to public with this language they will remember my name they will say oh that's the style of that guy yeah but what happens when because of our natural laziness that sometimes saves our lives majority of us majority of the musicians do the same thing what happens the culture change we end up with the music of our generation being characterized as a music that has a stripped down musical phrasing that's in particular is what distinguishes music of last 20 years for example from the music of the times when jazz was a thing and um, even electronic music for a lot of people i guess if you ask them to describe an electronic music uh, some genres i don't know like in general let's say in general electronic music they will with different words by in particular mentioned that the musical phrasing is limited <clears throat> back in the days when i was a student i and some other um, musicians my fellow students they um, we discussed those problems and we were talking about those things and i remember i encountered one article an interview with a German group called Mouse on Mars, uh, rather famous musicians who once upon a time were, were among those who came up with glitch music. 
uh, they were kind of an authority for me and some other guys and they discussed the same problem uh, musical interfaces of uh, modern computer programs affecting the results of composition and how to overcome this problem of be ending up doing the same stuff over and over their proposition was never do the whole composition in one program play with programs as you would play with musical instruments <clears throat> because yeah let's take a mechanical musical instruments it's the same problem basically uh, four strings of a cello and the bow it's an interface uh, keyboards of the piano keyboards keys of the piano well keyboard mechanism of it it's an interface yeah and s s the instrument selection for a composer it's not just a timbre selection it's also a possibilities of expression selection yeah so you cannot do a glissando a continuous glissando with a, p with, with a piano but you can do the same thing with the uh, same thing you can do that thing with violin and so on i guess you understand what i'm talking about but the thing is this proposition proposition of uh, the guys from uh, mouse on mars is not a convenient uh, was not a convenient thing to realize back in the days uh, of course we were doing the something like that well just because some programs could do something but other ones were more convenient for some other stuff yeah but having an ensemble an ensemble of uh, musical programs uh, wasn't a viable idea until 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 I found out about the Jack D now that was an astonishment because Jack D is the thing that allows us to interconnect inputs and outputs of different programs synchronize their timelines and even send MIDI messages here and there a beautiful thing one of the best things I found in computer music over this whole several years journey sorry for probably too much uh, of a background noise it's very hot these days uh, more than plus 30 in St. Petersburg and almost no wind I have to open up everything so that we could have something to breathe here something to breathe <clears throat> You can also see that I'm uh, doing things live now uh, and by live I mean that uh, instead of editing I use this uh, OBS thing and some other tricks to make uh, the result edit free. I hope I will be able to do things much more effectively this way. Okay, so yeah jack t a very flexible tool i guess these days is a must to for, for any serious musician is a must to know this tool um, because in particularly it's a multi-platform thing even though it said that it works uh best on linux but that i guess that might change any day uh combine that flexibility of interconnecting the programs with the flexibility of making your own interface using real-time music and systems like super collider and you have a instrument that well name what it cannot do i don't know it's difficult to imagine such a thing so let's take a look uh, at some uh information that i <clears throat> prepared for this introductory introductionary introductionary video i hope one day there will be a chat in which people will suggest me what is the right english word for what i want to say <laughs> or maybe a neural network but it would be better if those would be alive people okay um in uh, 
several uh, next videos in a well, I guess four or five videos. Uh, I will talk about this MIDI-based production system uh, based around mentioned Super Collider, Jack D, and a door. In my case, it will be uh, Ardor door, uh, but there are some el someone else, someone else, other ones. Uh, I hope that I will be able to explain the things that people already use in other programs uh, in so-called in the box style but i will explain how we can do that and more than that uh, by using super collider a door and a jack d i will base my stuff around the linux system because that's what i use most of the time the same things might work uh, with more or less success in Mac and Windows. Um, let's see, I don't know. But I will base all the stuff around Linux, so let's start. Here, my system here is the system that I installed not that long ago. It's uh, Debian Linux with the cu custom installation and a custom setup. But for those who are new to Linux, I would suggest not go this way. This is... Um, AV Linux, this is a website of AV Linux. This is one of those Linux distributions that has everything set up to work with audio. So you just install this image, install this on operating uh, on your computer, this operating system. If you don't know how to do that, there are lots of tutorials online how to do that. So install it and you probably will be ready to go. The only thing that uh, but at least with the last version that I've tested, and it was like a couple of years ago, um, there was no super collider. There was no super collider. So if in a new version there is a uh, super collider is not installed, then it's good to just go to the command line interface, launch a turn on terminal emulator, and do sudo apt update. Yeah, then enter and your super user password. And after that, sudo apt. Apt is a package manager, manager in um, Debian based systems. And this is a Debian based system. Uh, apt install super, uh, super duper, super collider. Uh, and uh, yeah, Super Collider, something like this will do, by the way. Super Collider and this uh, so-called glob, uh, yeah, shell glob sign. Um, because actually there are several applications with the Super Collider name in them, and all of, of them are those that you probably would like to have. Uh, let me show them. Yeah, here are those. You can just put literally names, uh, separating them by the underscore. That's how this command line interface works. Super Collider, uh, Super Collider Emacs, for example, is an um, uh, interface that I use to work with Super Collider. Uh, Super Collider common, the thing you will need. Uh, Gedit is another uh, text editor. If you work with that one, probably you don't, but okay, it's there. Uh, Super Collider Server is the one you want. You need Super Collider Language, definitely. Vim and ID is definitely the one you probably will want to have. And Super Collider Dev is needed in case you want to compile something for Super Collider. So also a good thing to have. Uh, and another thing is SC3 plugins. This will install DSP plugins, DSP uh, unit generators for Super Collider, additional ones, as well as some works uh, so that's it you install those and you have super collider another uh, operating system that makes it easy to start work with audio on linux is uh, this ubuntu studio i didn't test it a long time uh, like i don't know like six seven years back i tested it and i didn't like it but these days people say that it, it's good it's good it uses now this Plasma Desktop. Plasma Desktop is set to 
outperform even XFCE, which is said to be lightweight desktop environment. And uh, what's, what is good about Plasma, the, the KDE desktop environment is that, well, it always was smart by design, but not always uh, uh, good by implementation. But uh, the version 3.5, that old one, like 15 years back, well, was probably the best thing I ever used. So maybe this, the new one is, is a good thing to try. So if you go this way, uh, I would suggest trying this Plasma thing. But the best thing that I actually tested was this AV Linux. Okay with that. So you install these operating systems if you don't have it. And then the next thing we need to do is to uh, take a look at Jack, Jack D. So Jack D is a package that comes Oh, krasavchik, krasavchik. you see machine learning is now um, suggesting some stuff. No, not here. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, yeah. Okay. So Jack D. Uh, by itself, by default, it's a command line based uh, utility. But there are lots of uh, graphical front ends for this Jack D thing. Jack D, usually, okay, you can see there are lots of tools that come with the Jack D package, but Jack D itself, yeah, we usually have Jack D or Jack D bus. Both do the same thing, launch Jack D and uh, allow you to operate Jack D, but with a different way. And Jack D bus is the more flexible one and it allows to change some parameters of the server on the fly. Let's take a closer look. Okay, this is one of the most popular... Uh, where are these? Yeah, this is the one of the most popular frontends for JackT. It's called uh, QJack CTL. What it allows us to start, stop JackT, set uh, the parameters that we want to use for Jack T and uh, one of the most important things, the connections graph, yeah, this patch bay. Uh, what should I start with, the, the patch bay or the setup? Okay, let's start with this, uh, with the patch bay. First, I will show the patch bay, what it represents. In this case, it shows us uh, Jack T audio input and output ports of different applications that we have. For example, here is the super collider. The one that I'm uh, playing now. Uh, 16 inputs, 32 outputs. That's what I specified for it. It's connected to a system which is a output of my audio hardware. Uh, then we have uh, also this uh, utility with the SC name, which is a um, Jack client created by OBS, yeah, the broadcasting software. Uh, it also receives, and that's why you hear the sound of the super collider. And the system capture one is connected to the mic uh, Jack client, also the one created by the OBS and which allows us to uh, hear my voice. Okay then, also to Jack, I will not explain this now because probably it's irrelevant to anyone but me. Uh, but it's a way, in short, it's a way uh, to connect to Super Collider or super, to, to the Jack D applications that don't have Jack D support by default. That's it. Application should have a possibility to work as a Jack T client. The developer has to add that to it uh, so that Jack T will be able to communicate with that application. But if not, if it's not, then there are ways around. And th 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 there are different ways. That's why I don't want to talk about that now. Okay, then we have these red ones, red input and output ports, which are the MIDI uh, ports. You can see that here's the Super Collider, for example, here's the Lounge Key Mini, which is a, a MIDI controller that I use, but somehow they are not connected to anything. And nevertheless, well, 
Super Collider reacts to a key presses and does something. So why is it so? The thing is, there are actually two um, MIDI subsystems, yeah, MIDI implementations that we usually have running in Linux. The first one is called Elsa MIDI and another one is called Jack MIDI. And we need both if you want to work with Super Collider. The thing is, for some reason, uh, Super Collider only works with Elsa MIDI and doesn't work with Jack MIDI directly, which is a pity because, well, Jack MIDI is better in uh, certain ways. I will later in later video probably touch on why Jack D uh, MIDI is better than Elsa mm, and why it would be good if Super Collider would have it. But it is what it is, Super Collider only works with Alsa Media. In order to see uh, Alsa Media connections, a connect, connect, connect GUI application can show it us. You can see here the Lounge Key Media, and these are the Alsa Media connections. Lounge Key Media is connected to uh, Super Collider, uh, Media True is connected to it timer announce and so on actually QJAC CTL also has an ability to show them but for some reason in my case it doesn't I guess that's because uh, uh, I used the version that I compiled myself and maybe I just didn't use some of the parameters for compilation and that's why it doesn't show the Elsa media I don't know probably in your case it will do that it will show it Usually that's what I had if I installed QJAC CTL from a repository. But nevertheless, that A Connect GUI variant should work. Well, for me, it works all the time. Yeah. So the door, our door in my case, works with Jack MIDI. But uh, Super Collider works with Alsa MIDI. How can we interconnect them? How can we send messages from our door to Super Collider and back? Can, can, we, can we do that and how? In my case, what I'm using is this A to J MIDI daemon, this application. It's an application uh, which was created by, created by Fons Andriansson. Uh, you can see here is the web page with his software. He had done lots of very valuable tools for Linux Audio. And um, A to J MIDI D is the application that allows to basically see these are, for example, these are. These are the ALSA MIDI ports, but represented as Jack MIDI ports. I can already, if I will launch our door, I don't do it now because, well, it will create a mess of connections. Well, that's how it works usually. Um, and that's how generally the graphical patch base work and, 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 and analog ones, yeah, the, the mechanical ones. When you come near the patch bay, usually like it's a mess, like what the fuck. <clears throat> but you can see they're already represented and they are represented due to the activity of this application A to J MIDI D. Probably if you go AV Linux way, for example, or Ubuntu Studio, AV Linux for sure, you don't even have to think about it. But it's good to know that actually there are two subsystems and that's why in some cases you don't have any connections, but there is a connection and why is it, and why is it not represented by the GUI? That's why. Okay, let's now take a look at the interface of the setup. I guess I covered the general like a canvas of uh, Jack the interface. How do we set it up? The most important thing among these settings, you can see I'm using dri uh, Alsa drivers. Alsa is the did I talk about what Alsa is? Okay, Alsa is a project advanced Linux sound architecture. That's how it's called but that's too general. Well, usually what it provides is the drivers for your hardware, as well as some tools to work with that. Uh, uh, you can see that it not only provides drivers for, let's say, audio cards, also there is a MIDI subsystem, yeah? And not only that. 
Uh, usually for USB devices, PCI de devices, PCIe devices, I had one. <clears throat> Elsa is the source of drivers. I run uh, JackD with the uh, real time option on, a synchronous mode on, uh, sampling rate of 44.1. No, Lana, no, Chet, no, Bajalsa. He wants to talk with me. I want to keep it by my hand so, I the, so that I will see the notes. Don't forget what I want to talk about. But this. Uh, this guy wants to talk to me. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe my words just sound like Google. Okay, Google or something. Uh, okay. So. I run it like this. I don't know, maybe you, uh, well, just experiment if you need this server synchronous mode or not. I'm still uh, learning some of the settings because over the years I was not given a damn about them like this synchronous mode, for example. Why? Because that's how I used to work with, uh, with it. But before I decided to make videos on uh, uh, this Super Collider Media, composition, I decided, okay, let me dig deeper to provide maybe some uh, more details into how it all works so that people who has some habits which dif differentiate from me, from my ones, it would be more comfortable for them. So uh, I'm still experimenting. There are some things that have something in their name and, and description. But uh, it's not usually, no, not usually. It's sometimes not what they meant to do, what they actually do. So for some reason, maybe because of some bugs or maybe because of some misnaming things or some, something like that. So, okay, usually you keep real time on and uh, this synchronous mode. I hope that it will uh, help me being more accurate with timing. There are some problems with that. I will touch on that just in a moment. Uh, so that's why I use it. Maybe it's better not to use it in, the, in some cases. Just experiment. I'm still unsure with this one. Okay, the sampling rate. Well, sampling rate is a fundamental thing here to know uh, how much samples uh, we will have in one second represented in our um, audio. Uh, streams, yeah, <clears throat> audio signals in memory on, on hard drive. Uh, usually 44.1 is enough, uh, 48 is maybe more convenient. For me, I'm just used to 44.1 uh, and resampling is not a big, big thing. If you want to go 96k, okay, you probably know what you're doing. I don't have a need for that, just takes much time. The signals are still accurate with this sampling rate. <clears throat> there might be cases if you uh, develop some filters and so on, but usually there are ways to overcome the limitations represented by the um, intersample period. So 44.1 is usually enough. Uh, it said that uh, 22.5 is uh, the boundary of human hearing. But the actual thing is, uh, in a musical context, we don't usually need anything above 15, 16 kilohertz. Um, I mean, okay, uh, it's usually there, but it doesn't have a big value. And most of the listeners don't give a shit about that. So 44.1 for me is okay. 48 is might be more convenient. Why? Because videos usually use, video standards usually use that sampling rate. But in case I just, in those cases, I just resample, and that's it. Okay, frames per period, this is more important thing. So uh, audio is usually processed uh, in chunks, yeah. That's an effective way to do that. So let's say there is one program and it sends audio to another program. Um, it can do that sample by sample, yeah. But uh, then servicing that procedure of sending samples from one program to another one will will be a well will add a huge overhead to the whole DSP uh, operation in general. Um, it would be more effective to let's say send a 
chunk of the signal, process it, then asks for for next one, process it again, and so on and so on. This is called like usually what is it, what is the name? Um, audio callback here yeah, or something like that. Well, okay, there is, I guess there is no official name, but people will usually those who deal with this stuff on a low level, they understand what it's all about. Uh, so if we will take a look at the by the way help yeah frames per second between process calls okay that doesn't also quite explain what it is yeah process what is process then okay so in order to minimize the number of those calls between different processes between different uh, applications uh, calls to give me next portion of the signal I will process it okay I'm done give me the next one and so on we uh, that the solution is to make the chunk itself bigger here you can see usually goes with the power of two you, you can also provide something not of a power of two value but it's safe to go this way but there's a downside of having a bigger um, chunks processed uh, in one call because until that chunk is processed system will not give you the results of processing so if i want for example to press e and hear the feedback from the system i will have to wait for the first chunk to be processed then it will go to the hardware and i will hear the results so like uh, practically uh, something above 256 is uh, the value when you start to feel the delay but lower than that is usually good. For me, 256 is already okay. It's a good compromise point. Uh, yeah, why I'm talking about the compromise. When this uh, chunk is a uh, smaller size, let's say we go 228 or 64, then the response is immediate. You don't feel any delay here, but the DSP load, because we the applications will talk to each other a lot, or not to each other each other indirectly well then uh, the DSP load will raise much faster much faster so this is an important thing the periods per buffer it goes like this how many frames per periods and uh, how many periods per buffer uh, usually for USB devices it's uh, recommended to have three periods per buffer for other cases usually it goes like two that's it, that's it what I have to say about that. Now, uh, what else I use I use here? Yeah, duplex, it's simple. I want to have uh, inputs and outputs with my hardware. So in this case, you, you choose duplex and um, which device you want to use and uh, latency. Now latency is the thing that is good to talk about. What else here? Yeah, that's it. That's genuinely it. Yeah. Dbus and latency. Okay, let's first talk about latency or Dbus. Mm. Okay, latency. Latency, um, there are several types, I, I guess, but if we differentiate by the source of the latency, Type of types of latency. The first one is the latency introduced by the device and the lower level stuff in your operating system, the drivers and the kernel level in Linux. And the second one is application level latency. So any every Jack client will introduce its own latency dependent on I don't know DSP algorithm or how it works with sound and so on. Yeah, for example, SuperCollider has a, a buffer size setting. Yeah, same thing as that uh, audio callback size with that, that period size with Jack D. How many samples will be processed in one uh, callback at a time? It's efficiency versus immediacy. And by the way, sometimes it matters the ability to have a feedback with less time value, yeah, like single sample feedback, for example. You will not be able to do that if you 
only have a possibility to process uh, chunk by chunk and your chunk size, let's say, is 64 samples. So every application introduces its own uh, delay time, its own latency. When I take a signal from my DAW and connect it to a super collider, another application, process it in super collider, or even just uh, make a round trip that's connect to super collider, take output from the just playback of that audio and connect it back to audio to a new track. This whole round trip will introduce some latency. Now, the lower level the hardware also introduces its own uh, round trip latency. And uh, if we provide this information to JackT, then in most cases, JackT will be able to automatically align uh, the recorded material. Yeah, something like let's take this example with a door to super collider and back when you record this stuff the introduced latency will be compensated by jack d and the new recorded stuff will be aligned with the previous material so jack d can do that but if it knows for sure for sure what are the latencies on the lower level how can we find out those latencies? It's a good thing to do before we start to work uh, with this system. Here is the tool called Jack Delay. Jack Delay, this is the one, by again Fons Andriansen. It might be that you have it in repositories. I didn't have, uh, couldn't find it in uh, Debian repositories hmm, for some reason. So I just download it and here's the uh, way to install it from by compiling from the source code. It's a small application in most cases, I guess it should just compile nicely. So you download the package, you extract it to a certain path, to a certain directory. And you can see here is my, my path like MNT3 SRC jack delay. This is where it's, uh, okay, shown with my finger. This is the path where I in, e, e, e extracted it. And then it will have this content inside, no, not this. This content inside, yeah. There is some uh, uh, authors copying information and readme, it's a good habit to read the readme file if there is one, but long story short, we have this source uh, folder inside, go to that so source folder, here I am inside of this folder. Uh, it will have the source files inside, type make, enter and this will compile the program will compile and you will end up with this jack delay binary file then you just launch this file like this um, <laughs> jack delay minus e minus i the input system capture one in my case why system ca capture one this is what i have by default system capture one this is a mic input in my case uh, and minus o system playback one yeah uh, system playback one what this command will do it will start jack delay tool and connect the mic input to its input jack delay input and output of jack delay to system yeah let's start it by the way now you might hear that i have uh, this uh, 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 sinusoid some tone. Here is the jack delay that it that that appeared in my patch bay. You can see it's connected now. And the uh, interface, the text interface, will show the delay time that it can that it's trying to calculate. I will not do it now because well, uh, it's too loud. But I guess you get the idea. So the next thing after you started it is to connect the inputs and outputs of your hardware. One of the very simple ways is just uh, output, let's say these headphones, to the mic. Yeah, That's how it actually connected in my case. That's how I connected it. Mic goes to the jack delay, jack delay goes to output. And output is in the headphones and inputs, input is in the mic. So then if I just put it near the mic, 
the Jack Delay application itself uh, computes a cross correlation, and by the cross correlation algorithm, it tries to find what is the distance between the signal that was generated by Jack the uh, Jack Delay tool and what is the signal that comes to its input now after the round trip. It will just compute what is the distance between them using cross correlation and tell you what is the delay, the round trip delay. <clears throat> minus E then, this minus E, minus E, minus E computes just the delay before the Jack D introduced delay. So the value that you will get, something, I don't know, like this, usually it's smaller. In my case, it's something around this value or even smaller. Uh, also de depends on the uh, a buffer size of the Jack T, the one I discussed previously. Mm. So once you get this value, you take half of it, half of this value in frames and put it here and another half goes here and that's how you let Jack D know about the latencies in your system. It's a good ability if you can uh, do that without restarting Jack and it's a good ability if you can change uh, these parameters like for example uh, frames per second, uh, frames per period on the fly. Is it possible with Jack D? Yes, it's possible if you use Jack Dbus interface. Dbus is a protocol, uh, inter-process communication protocol, so if you have it you can talk to a Jack D running Jack D bus process via this Jack control tool. Jack control tool. In particular, like Jack control exit will stop Jack. Uh, Jack control control help will show the available uh, commands. Some of them have different parameters, so it's a long story. Read about that if you want. I will talk later, I will talk about the particular use cases uh, and how we can do that because front ends also allow to do that. Um, but that's for later. Now I just wanted to mention that. To mention that we can do these things. Okay, so Jack the bus for um, on the fly change of. Um, Jack D parameters. I guess I, co I covered the basics of setting things up. Let me take a look if I missed something that I wanted to talk about. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, systems, uh, those, and so on. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, but probably the only thing I didn't mention is that those, but you probably know. Okay, in Linux, if you don't know the state of the art these days, there are lots of those that are available on Linux. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, open source ones, like the Ardor uh, that I will use in these videos. There are commercial variant of it or relative of it called Mixbus from Harrison with specific organization and interface around the mixer uh, part of it. There is a Reaper these days, which has nice uh, media related functionality. Uh, there is Bitwig, uh, waveform traction and so on. The one that I like, uh, maybe later we'll make videos about it, is called Non, Non which is a set of uh, standalone apps that together form a Jack D based door, like non sequencer, which is a MIDI mixer, uh, MIDI sequencer, non uh, timeline, which is a application to record audio into the audio files, into memory and audio files, and a Jack uh, and a non mixer, which is a mix tool, which can host plugins and uh, mix signals and pan them and so on. Uh, very cool thing based around the idea of having Jack D based uh, virtual studio basically. Okay, so that's uh, an introductionary video. With the next one, I will start uh, discussing 
uh, super collider based solutions for that and let's see how it goes i hope this will be very useful yeah so till next time let's see how it goes